So well, I haven't really got anything to show off uh, at the moment yet, and it's probably going to be quite a while until I'm able to upload anything else next. Uh, probably not until the Bristol Bot Builders Beetleweight Championship event video. Um, I thought I'd take the opportunity to show off this, which I'm trialling out. And it is a 40 amp dual motor ESC from uh, AliExpress that I'm going to be trialling out. Now, while I'm going to make an attempt to take this out of the packet with one hand, um, the reason I bought this was because I was kind of running low on options after my Smart Drive Duo ESC from Cytron, which I used in Air Max, uh, for some reason is playing up on me, and uh, it kind of put me in a position where I was unable to fight with it at Colchester, and I was unable to go to Crawley and fight weaponless with the robot because of it. So, just in, I'm almost got it out of the packet. So, um, this is it. Uh, yeah, and I will leave... Uh, bit of it lying on the table here so you can just get a little bit of a better view at it um but the other thing about this is that also what is written on the board is the name pain which i assume is the manufacturer or the designer of it i'm not 100 percent sure on that um but um the name pain is actually on a few other escs which i bought from aliexpress and they're pretty decent from, well, from my personal experience with them anyway um i do use um the one, two amp versions and some three amp versions in the amp weights the 150 gram division now i do have them somewhere but i don't they're all inside robots or um yeah so i don't really have any um outside of anything at the moment so i have actually got a few examples on the table right now that i'll just go over to show uh what kind of pain escs that i have used before okay so here we have a select few examples that i have used um obviously um Two of them were not sold in the way that they are currently. Um, I've had to make a few modifications to them. Um, but just to give an idea, this is the 5 amp one, which I have used uh, in the amp weight division. These are a little bit too big. Um, that's why the, um, the 2 amp version comes in a lot handy because of how much smaller that one actually is. This is a 10 amp version, which I'm currently trying out in uh, a few loner beetle weights. Um, they're not going to be for full combat or for... Um, any events that happen doing the UK because I'm actually going to be trialling this out for some robots that are going to be on loan for a private offence uh, that's going to be taking part during a charity conference and uh, I'm getting on well with this one at the moment so far and this one is the 20 amp version which I have used in beetle weights and the control of that for that division isn't the greatest probably because of how much current there still is going through it and even if I did put resist that's the other thing the resistors that I put on the motor, and I do this with the amp weights as well on these and the other ESCs, I only put them on there just for braking, because what these motors, what this ESC tends to do, is just, it doesn't stop the motor immediately, it just sort of slows it down when you take your, um, when you take your finger off the throttle, so, that's why the resistors come in really handy, I did try it on this one, um, but it didn't really seem to make that much huge of a difference, I think it might have just been because of the amounts of amps and current that are going through it, um, so, with this, uh, I think in theory, because what I'm going to be using these on is a pair of uh, 775 motors, um, because it did claim that uh, this ESC would work with those motors, so I'm curious to see what happens from there. Um, might try the resistors on it, depends on how I find this, how it runs without them. Um, but what I'm going to do now is just move on to getting some XT60s on them. And here we go, here we have some XT60s on the uh, motor outputs, uh, which are in blue, which I didn't know was a thing for XT60s until a few days ago when I bought them. And for some reason I can't get the camera to focus on it. Uh, come on, yep. Okay, I think that'll have to do. So, um, yeah, so now that I've got the XT60s on the drive ends, um, I haven't put them on the uh, input, the power input, because I just need to... Um, Work out a few things. So this is what it's going in, which is Air Max, the uh, featherweight uh, vertical spinner combat robot. Now this is what it's replacing, which is the Smart Drive Duo 30, which I'm, I need to get uh, looked at. I'm in contact with the manufacturer, like I said earlier, uh, trying to work out what the hell the problem is. So it's actually going to be going on this side, because the battery was on this side and the weapon ASC. But thanks to this being a lot smaller um i'm able, i'm gonna put it on this side and the battery will be going on this side of the robot um but i just need to work out a few things first so i'm just gonna cut right here for now okay so i've been stripping the robot down from uh 
quite a bit of its wiring. Uh, the bracket holding them in is gone. I'm going to get that replaced with a newer one. Uh, I've just got one of the uh, wires just squeezed into the um, XT60 as the same there, which I know is probably not the wisest thing to do, but I just want to check to make sure the thing works. So we've got uh, the power light on the receiver, which is a good sign. <laughs> Okay, so it does work, uh, on one side at least, uh, but what I'm just going to do is just going to get it checked over on the other side. Okay, so now I've got both motors hooked up, and uh, yeah, let's just give this a go. Also, I just want to show off the noise. If I just turn off the transmitter on, have a listen to the noise it makes, the motors go. <laughs> anyway... Okay, so that's good, and uh, actually, the it, it's barely getting warm that ESC, so just disconnect that. Um, yeah, so it does work. Uh, so, what I just need to, but what I've also had to do is just reverse the polarity on both ends because it turns out it's positive for the blue wire and negative is the yellow, as it turns out in that case. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to fix the XT60s on the motors in the opposite way so I'm going to get them taken out and yeah that's really all I can say all right so there it is amongst the receiver the uh brushless weapon ESC and the brushless motor itself um so yeah uh I did manage to get it in it's all hooked up to the motors there is a lot of tidying up that needs to be done especially around the back area there uh needs to do a bit of cable tying to keep these wires away from this uh, outrunner motor but um i do i put it on the floor it's quarter past 12 at night and i debating on putting it on the floor a little bit just before i carry on any further work with it but um let's just give it a try okay if this doesn't work on the carpet i'll probably have to try it on the wooden bit over there area but let's just have a little taster <laughs> And the battery's gone. All right, take two. Well, it doesn't drive so bad on the carpet. Uh, just try taking it over in praying that the battery doesn't fall. I might just kick that in. Just for a little bit. Okay, so overall, so far, uh, not finding it too bad. Um, I'll see, I'll, I'll drive it at full power tomorrow morning, but I'll just need to assemble a few bits on first. Okay, so that was 19 minutes into Thursday, and it is now Saturday morning. Um, you probably just can't see it very well, but there is the ESC inside of what is now a fully assembled Air Max. I'll just get the lid on. All the plus side this time round is that I have all the electronics on one side and the battery alone on the other side. So, there we go, there's a better view of it for people who haven't seen it yet. Now, if I take you to the arena, it will be fighting in. Um, so, yeah, here we are at the Extreme Robots event here in at the Mesa Leisure Centre, and that is the arena it will be fighting in. And I'm just going to stop recording just for a little bit just so I can turn the light off on my phone. Okay, so this is the arena that Air Max will be fighting in. And as you can see, uh, yeah, for, but for those who haven't uh, got the chance to see what it's like around the back of the Extreme Robots Arena, if you have been in the audience, then yeah, this is it. Um, so the Featherweights are gonna be a pre-show thing, uh, which is new for Extreme Robots for this year. Um, I don't know if they are doing groups or if they're throwing them into one fight. Um, 
but regardless, I'll probably be in the, the last one or whatever one pops up anyway. Um, I actually don't really have a lot to say at this point because I haven't really had anything with caffeine in it yet. So um, I'll stop recording for now and the next time you do hear from me will be when Air Max is loaded up in the pen here. And here we have Air Max in the bullpen. So just a little taster of some of the featherweights that are gonna be in this battle. Uh, there's Say Snakes, Weapon of Choice, Air Max of course. Um, John, what's the, what's the name of this one? It wasn't fair. I held. Yeah. OTTR. OTTR, okay. So we've got that one I don't know. We've got Shrapnel and that one I don't know off the top of my head. We've got Palace down there. So uh, yeah, let's wait and just see what the hell happens in that arena. Okay, so I didn't actually film that fight on the phone. I did film it on the GoPro. Um, but the reason I didn't feel it because I don't know what happened. I just drove it in the arena and then it just stopped for some reason. I did um, check it after immediately and the drive seems to be working fine. Um, it might be the battery because it's a nickel metal hydride I'm using and when this is driving, the lights would go out and then come back on again. So it's because of the, the lack of current that's coming through it. So I'm going to give it another charge and we'll try it again in the next fight, which is before the show at 4 p.m. Okay, so I didn't actually think to do this before um, screwing the lids on, but um, it's now uh, Sunday here at Extreme Robots, and um, for some reason I've lost uh, mixing on the ESC, um, but I have got mixing on the uh, Deviation Devo 70, which uh, Dave Weston from Team Hell has lent me. Um, so it works, we've got it tech checked, drive works, and the weapon system works fine. So. We're going to only find out when it does the thing, when it's, if it's actually in the arena. Okay, well, we didn't get 
the weapon working and I think I know why, but it lasted the full fight. <laughs> Okay, so I know this is probably not the best and not as flattering of angles I've ever done, but um, I'm actually doing this on my phone because I generally can't be bothered to get the camera out. And uh, this is the best place I can mount the phone and I'm actually on my knees doing this. So um, I didn't actually think to give a verdict or, or give a summary of that particular fight um, after it happened because I just didn't think to at the time. But um, in terms of the ESC itself, I actually found the driving and handling pretty decent. Um, just as good as I would say as the ones that I've used in the amp weights, the fine band versions, the 10 amp versions. Not, I mean, the 20 amp versions are not as actually good as the ones inside of this. But uh, yeah, overall, I actually found the ESC to be pretty decent. Um, but on the uh, next builds that I do, because I'm going to be buying another one of these ESCs and trying it out in another featherweight that I'll be building, which uh, should be completed in the spring or the summer of next year, depends on how quick I get the new heavyweight build done. Um. And what I'm going to do with that time is something is that I've done the same on the 5 amp, 10 amp and uh, 3 amp ESCs that I've used on the amp weights. And that's put a resistor between the motors on the terminals because that way it allows for braking. Because as I said earlier on with this, because with these ESCs made by Payne, which I'm assuming is the company that makes them, um, they do this thing where if you let go of the throttle, um, they just sort of slow the motors down rather than stop them immediately. Whereas if you put resistors on the terminals of the motors, that sorts it out fine and they will stop instantly. So I'm going to try some uh, 100 ohm resistors, which should be enough in theory. They're pretty big resistors, um, bigger than the usual size. But I'm going to give those a try, put them on the motors. I'm going to be using the same motors and gearbox setup on that featherweight build as well as this one, which I've started using. Um, because uh, actually, I haven't really talked about this because I know it's not relevant to the ESC itself but i thought i'd show this because it is showing of course air max the robot it's used in so i used to use these which are pretty old uh jimson gr01 motors which um were quite which were quite popular i'd like to think back in the day quite a, a handful of uh, featherweight robots used them um but they've been discontinued in favor of a newer model and then that was discontinued as well um it's a uh, quite a long story but um the reason i stopped using this was because of this that happens. So as you can see, that's obviously how it should be. But that um, the uh, threaded shaft was stripped clean off by Neon, the machine of Ellis Ware, which I'm sure most in the robotering community are familiar with. But yeah, that was the reason why I stopped using. I'm probably not going to use these on the new Fevoy build because, like this one, the wheels will be exposed. But I'm going to be saving these for something that's where the wheels are enclosed. I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do with these yet, but I do want to hang on to these and get that shaft replaced. So, going back to the ESC, because of course that's what the video is about, do I recommend it? Um, if you're looking at getting into beginning featherweights, then I'd say go for it. If you are on a budget for a featherweight build, then yeah, go for it. Um, but there are other options I would recommend personally, because I, I don't feel it is as good as a lot of options are that that are out there in the market, sorry. I'm sure that many people will probably agree with me on that, and not many people would agree that I think it's that good because I'm sorry, well, I think I may have been the only person in the roboteering community that has used that particular ESC. I don't know of anyone that has used it before. I could be very wrong on that, but um so yeah, if you actually have used this ESC before, then let me know in the comments. But um just from my personal experience, I do actually like the ESC and I do personally recommend it to those who are either getting started into featherweights or are on a really tight budget when building featherweights. And that's really all I have to say. So um, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I don't exactly know what I have next up in mind for this channel, but um, whatever I do release next, I'll see you then and goodbye for now.